What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we're going over how to play Calervo today and six different builds. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have seven build configs. There's not the seven builds of Calervo, but I'll we'll have a seventh Calervo build out later this week. Before we get into it, make sure you're subbed to the channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. Also, check out the live stream channel. I might be live later tonight farming up more Arcanes, but we did about like six hours of Arcane farming yesterday, so maybe not. But I'll definitely be live tomorrow getting that Ceramic Dagger in Karnan and the weekly reset video and all that stuff. All right, so Kalervo, the newest frame, he's pretty uh, divisive. Let's just start with the biggest thing here. Kalervo does not have shields. That's the first thing we have to start off with. If you are going to be trying to play this frame... You need to be aware that he is kind of like a Naros. He can die to one bullet. He can technically die to one bullet if the enemy is high enough level. So right here, enemies with like lowish dam damage per bullet will not kill him. Instantly, that is. But yeah, there is no way of shield gating. There is no way of, you know, just having invincibility frames from the actual abilities of the frame. You have to take that elsewhere. So the ways you can get invincibility elsewhere are going to be from Rolling Guard mod that comes from Arbitrations... And also Vazarin Dash Focus Tree, which will make you invincible for a brief period of time. Frames that are not Colervo, not uh, Inaros, they have shields. They can they can shield gate. Uh, you're gonna need to go for other sources of that. Trying to do level ten thousand Colervo, which I would not recommend. I'm gonna try st still try to do it at some point. But yeah, level ten thousand Colervo is gonna be a real big pain in the butt. He's got no shields. So going over these abilities, we'll show how they all work. So his passive gives you increased heavy attack efficiency and heavy attack wind-up speed. So he is a melee heavy attack focused frame. Now he doesn't have to be, but a lot of these abilities do synergize with melee, so you probably should be using the melee of him anyway. First ability is his helmet ability he gives other frames, but for him it's going to be uh, Wrathful Advance. It's got a teleport range. It's got a melee crit chance after you teleport to an enemy and do heavy attack, and it has a duration of the crit chance buff. So basically you tap it, uh, and it will teleport an enemy and do a heavy attack on them. You can hold the button down to teleport to a targeted location. What you can also do is you can go to the control settings. If you think that holding down the button to teleport is too annoying, I've changed mine to tap. I just tap the button to teleport now and I hold the button to heavy attack. You can go to your control settings and options. Go to invert, tap, hold, and go to Calervo. Inverted right here. This will change it for his helmet and for the actual frame. And there's other frames here too if you didn't know about this feature. So... That can make it where you're teleporting by tapping the button and heavy attacking by holding the button. I found it to be a little bit better, um, but it's up to you if you think that's actually going to be better or worse. So first ability is his helmet, like I said, so you can get this other frames. I'll have a new video on a frame using this helmet on probably Monday, so keep an eye out for that. It's actually really good on that frame. Um, but yeah, it's going to give you a bunch of crit chance, so you teleport to them, you get a big crit chance buff for melees for whatever mod duration you've gone for, and this will allow you to get massive, massive red crits, even on light attacks. It doesn't only give the crit chance on heavy attacks, also it will work on light attacks too. Um, and yes, it can work on the glaive, it's a little bit buggy on the glaive with the actual teleporting of the heavy attack, but yeah, the glaive can get more crit chance. I would recommend the glaive on Calervo, uh, and some of the footage I'll show you today is the glaive on Calervo. Okay, well, he's got he's got two melee attacks. Now, what does what's his second ability do? Is that having to do with melee? It does actually have something to do with melee. Second ability, Recompense. He throws daggers all around him. They fly, they spin around and attack enemies. If they don't hit an enemy, they'll come back and hit you and deal some self-damage that will not trigger Hunter Adrenaline, unfortunately. So, uh, this is the ability you're going to spam a lot on Calervo. This is the ability that will kind of keep you alive uh, because every enemy you hit with these daggers will both heal your health bar, and if your health bar is full... You'll get some Overguard on top of that. He's got the new mechanic for frames called Overguard. Uh, and think about like an extra health bar on top of your normal health bar. But it's not really affected by many things right now. And I hope that DE makes Overguard in general just stronger for frames. Um, so the one of the big things on here is that you get Overguard and you hit enemy when you're full health. The Overguard cap is 5,000 is not affected by strength. So as you saw, I jumped into those heavy gunners. There was nothing I could have done there. I could have maybe run Vazarin and stuff to survive. Let's get two Exogoxed Heavy Gunners, and I'll show you. Like, you can kind of see how this ability works. So right now, my bar, my health bar is 2,400. If I get near an enemy and hit him with this dagger, as you'll see, my health bar is going up. I'm getting healed as they're shooting me, and that, that white health bar, the Overguard, is going up to 5,000. But they're actually actively shooting me, so I can't really cast it uh, constantly. Another thing about this frame, since he has no shields, you're going to really want to use the mod uh, Hunter Adrenaline or... Uh, Rage on him to get energy from your health bar taking damage. Very, very must-have mod on this guy. 
So as you can see, we're not completely overwhelmed. We can tank through it, but there will definitely be a point with this guy where he will just die in one bullet, and you won't be able to cast his tube in time. So if you if you like high level missions or you care about high level missions, um, we're gonna need to get a buff from DE probably on this one. So and let's let's quickly show his one his first ability as well. So the teleport heavy attack. Target on them, get some extra crit chance. Now I'm running around with extra crit chance on light attacks and heavies. So he's, he's very melee focused. Um, also, the second ability of these daggers I'm throwing out, they can build melee combo counters. You can see, 211 hits. I cast the second ability daggers, 217 hits. Also, one enemy can only be hit by, I believe, three daggers. So if you only have one enemy nearby you, you're going to be having those daggers come back and hitting you because only three of the daggers will hit that enemy. Moving on, so Recompense, this, it does a couple other things too, it does some slash damage and all that, but it's mainly just there to give you Overguard and to heal your health bar. Uh, probably his best ability, Collective Curse, is think of it like Mark for Death. You target an enemy, and nearby enemies will become marked uh, and linked to that enemy. All damage shared by the enemy is also shared with the other enemies. The damage redirection percentage is scaled with Strength, capping on a 200% power strength, giving 100% damage redirection, so every enemy will take full damage. This is very good. Um, it's also affected by range and how far the chains will, will chain between enemies. But something that is not affected is the angle of, at which the application of the chains goes. So a 60 to five, a 65 degree angle when you cast this ability will go from the enemy and chain out uh, outwards. So this is the reason you really, really want range in Calervo. Um, it's also a very powerful ability. Like if you use if you use high power weapons, chaining that damage will nuke down an entire hallway with like a non AOE like Furious, honestly. So very good one here. You can actually cast this multiple times while it's already active and link like the entire room together then blast them away in one shot. So very nice. It's better than Mark for Death. Uh, it's faster cast on the Mark for Death. It's it's just nice. It's, it's just nice. Now the marking of the chains is not going through walls, but if an enemy is chained, they can damage other enemies chained to them through walls. So it's pretty nice. Um, and we'll just quickly go over his ulti, Storm of Ucko. Throw the daggers into the air. The daggers rain down. It's just it's just the uh, the attack of like the elite archer from Zeraman. I mean, uh, Daviri. Uh, and what this will do is this will do slash damage, and it also is affected by range, duration, strength, and things of that nature. This will build melee combo. This is why one of the reasons Calervo is very, very. I mean, every ability is basically melee focused at this point. So let's get twenty exo gox dads. We're not trying to do a survivability test here, so I'm just going to pause them. By the way, these are steel path now. So for uh, Calervo's Collective Curse, we cast the ability. As you see, that entire area just got marked, but that was because of the 65 degree angle. If I had a better angle, I could have marked the entire entire group of them. So it's gonna really come down to you playing Calervo a lot. That was a much better chain that time. You playing Calervo and learning how his abilities work and uh, getting like the, the best kind of aim on him. So you can just do, you can link them all together, heavy attack. Now I have no combo right now, but that's where, that's where casting his fourth ability would have been nice to build combo. We'll actually resummon some enemies, and you can see how fast this can build combo up. Um, he, he, he's a frame you'll be walking around with like a 12x combo multiplier all the time with, so I consider that pretty good. There you go. 12x combo already, because we summoned in some enemies. Very good for Incarnon melees. Get your Incarnon uh, 6x combo. Throw out your daggers. Link the enemies together. While they're linked, the daggers will share damage between them. And this is no no uh, weapons killing level exo uh, level 185 exo gox stands with Calervo. He is a very energy-hungry frame, though, so keep that in mind when you're trying to play him. So let's go over some builds. I've got six different builds for you today. Five different helmets. And, yeah, um, the, the overall play style. So let, let, let's actually try to jump into 20 XO Goxia to see how this goes. Let, let just, let's just I've tried him on the Steel Path plenty of times. I just want to show you how, what his, his problems he has. So we're going to want to teleport in, I guess. Throw the daggers. Get out his, his overguard. As you can see, it's a constant battle. With you watching your health bar, trying to make sure you don't die, getting shot, and trying to stun the enemies so they don't kill you. So he can survive this, but as you can see, we have no energy anymore because the enemies are all stunned. If you're using Hunter Adrenaline, you got to make sure the enemies are uh, shooting you to get your energy back. But also, you can't go too high level with Hunter Adrenaline or you're just going to get one shot. So he's got a couple issues. But I'd say just just understand that he's not supposed to be a level 10,000 frame, survivability-wise. Damage-wise, he might be. But just accept the fact he's not level 10,000 and we'll work, we'll work on it from there. So as far as Archon Shards, I want to go for a no Tau Shard setup today. If you have Tau Shards, you can definitely change these around to different stuff. But uh, for the builds today, we've got one Strength Shard, normal, two Energy Max Shards, not using Prime Flow on like any Calervo build pretty much. 
Uh, and then two casting speed shards. You want to be able to cast that second ability, the daggers, really fast to get your overguard back. All right, so let's start off with the no helmet build right here. Um, so the biggest thing here is blind rage is going to be giving us a big chunk of power strength, but actually reducing our uh, our efficiency by a lot. I would go ahead and say, I didn't want to put this on the main, but I recommend to everybody, but I would go ahead and say, you can actually put on Transient Fortitude there instead. Because Kalerva does not need duration that much. Uh, as far as the duration of his abilities, with negative duration, we have a 10 second uh, Storm of Ucko duration. We have a 18 second Kalervo's Curse duration. And the other stuff, we, we technically have a 7 second Crit Chance buff on our 1. That's the only thing that's really affected by duration negatively. I feel like Kalervo's a frame you can go slightly negative duration and be okay. We're a little bit below 200% strength, but I can just quickly show you 91% damage redirection is like the same thing as 100%, honestly. These will, the enemies will get nuked down by Collective Curse and Storm of Ucko, no matter what. 100% it, it, doesn't even matter. Uh, but, you know, you, you still want a decently high percentage. I'd say like 80, 80, 90% is still what you want. So as far as the build here, this is the No Helmet build. Um, I would recommend that you use a Helmet on him, either removing his 1 or his 4. Um, and for the as far as the best Helmet on him, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think that uh, Nourish, and Nourish, Breach Surge, and Reeve, and also in Snare are the best Helmets on him. Keeping in mind, I have not tested out Roar, and I would like to test out Roar in the future. So the idea of this build is you want to have some tank stats. So our EHP, we have 81% damage reduction on health from our armor. We've got 2,400 health before Arcane Blessing. Arcane Blessing gives you about 1,200 extra health when it's fully stacked up, so we'll be at about 3,600. We've got Arcane Reaper. I don't think Arcane Reaper is really needed on him. I think Arcane Reaper is actually a pretty weak Arcane. We get 24 heal rate and 660 armor uh, for 10 seconds on melee kill. It is refreshable, thankfully, but 24 heal rate is really not that much. And I'll show you the weapons I'm using on him to get some lifesteal. So if you don't want to use Arcane Reaper, maybe go Molt Augmented, go with like uh, Attack Speed, Arcane Strike could be good since he's going to be a melee frame a lot of the time. Whatever you want to use is going to be up to you. I'm going to show Arcane Reaper because a lot of people like Arcane Reaper, and it's not that bad. Um, as far as adaptation on here, a lot of people don't know this. If you have a, if you don't have enough mod space to fit on a maxed out adaptation, you can actually put a lower rank adaptation. It will still go all the way up to 90. It just takes longer to get to that 90, and the duration is not as long. So that's what you can do. Um... He can be tanky, like I showed. He was, I was getting shot up at Exogoxstads. So that's the No Helmet build. And as far as, like, flow and all that and uh, natural talent, that's what the Archon Shards are for. We replaced, like, basically natural talent here with Stretch because of Archon Shards. We don't have Prime Flow on here because of Archon Shards, uh, etc., etc. And here's the Hunter Adrenaline mod I was telling you about. When you take damage on your health, it becomes energy. Very, very good for Kalervo. Speaking of energy, we've got my one of my favorite... Uh, Builds on him right here is going to be Nourish. So this is the Helmet ability from Grendel replacing his 4. What this will do is this will give you increased viral damage on weapons. It will make a viral AoE whenever you get shot. Probably the best reason to use this on him. And also it will give you an Energy Multiplier. This Energy Multiplier does affect Hunter Adrenaline. It might not show it visually on like the UI, but it does definitely work. This will allow you to have pretty much infinite energy. Um, as long as you don't get one shot, that is. And yeah, you probably will get one shot eventually, as I stated. So, casting Nourish. Every time an enemy shoots me, they get Viral Stun. And also, we are, we are running Quick Thinking now. So when we get low health, our energy, be energy bar becomes a second health bar. Now, if you're getting actually destroyed from every direction like that, you will not survive. But uh, this is not a realistic situation, to be honest. So, let's get more like five Exogoxsteads. And we'll see if we can actually face tank that. Like I said, he is not, he's not meant to be doing that. So, uh, that's just a situation that, of course, like, let me know what you guys do. How would you buff Kalerva? Let me know in the comments. I think uh, making the Overguard cap at least scale with strength could be a good start. But yeah, if you're playing in like a realistic mission setting, this this is quite tanky. Okay, well, definitely don't just stand there and die. <laughs> definitely don't just stand there and die. You should be actually trying to fight back. Um, but yeah, even with quick thinking, uh, a, a very high level enemy like that can kill you. Let's try one more time. Getting getting stunned by Viral. Mark them, uh, link them together. You gotta cast this too constantly. It's 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 kind of annoying how much you have to cast this too, but that's how they wanted to make them. So there, there you go. I'm actually fighting back. They're they're getting chain stunned by Nourish Viral. That's the big thing. Is every time you get shot, every enemy in the area that's not overguarded gets stunned and Viral prepped. Makes it very easy to like not die. Not to also not to mention we are also getting a ton of extra uh, health or. Much, much energy back when we get shot. So it didn't look that good there, but I'm just telling you that <laughs> I'll show some gameplay footage of it later. 
So pretty good that on that one. Um, technically, could, could fit on a third Umbral mod if you have some more space. But yeah, quick thinking. Now, also, Prime Flow might work on this one, as could Equilibrium. I'm still experimenting this one a little bit. But uh, yeah, Prime Flow could give us a lot more EHP, but I need to fit it on here somehow. So maybe, maybe in a future video we can throw that on there. Um, but yeah, range is so important for Clovo's Collective Curse, I decided to go for it. I think I guess, I guess we'd probably just go for a lower rank adaptation, and we'd go for um, Prime Flow or Equilibrium right there, if, if you wanted to go for like more EHP. Because the more the more energy you have, the more like Quick Thinking is going to have to work with. And also, Armor does apply to Quick Thinking too, so I could probably change it up a little bit more. But uh, as it stands right now, I'm liking it. And we'll move on to the next build here. Alright, moving on to Reeve. Now, Reeve is the helmet ability of Revenant, and this build is actually under construction as well. Uh, this is probably the build I'm going to try to take him to level 10,000 with. So, we're going to have Rolling Guard on here. We're going to actually go on Vazarin Focus School as well to give him uh, more invincibility time. And the entire idea of this build is to make us you can always cast Reeve to go into an invincible cloud, and also to kill enemies linked with Kalervo's Curse with Reeve. These are the only two abilities you're really casting on this. You probably aren't even going to cast your two because every enemy at level 10,000 will one-shot you by just like sneezing in your general direction. So that's the idea of this build. Let's show how this works. Now this is going to be no weapons. We'll go back to 20 Exo Goxtads. And we'll get some gameplay footage in here. I'm not going to spend too much time on these builds. I know I know it's pretty already a pretty long video. Link them together. Use Reeve. And as you can see, Reeve, it's just like Mark for Death on Revenant. Reeve on Kalervo can AoE kill enemies. And it's quite nice. So just to quickly show that one more time, this is all Kalervo's um, abilities and technically Reeve Helmet. Get the right angle, you can link them all together. So yeah, as you can see right here, I can, reca I can recast uh, collect the Collective Curse while it's active. Now, it's a pretty controlled situation. These guys have the same health bar and all that, but yeah, that can work in level 10,000. That's what I'm going to try to do. When I do bring the, the Kalervo, uh, to level, try to bring Kalervo to level 10,000, basically get my corpse carried to the extraction is what it's going to end up being. So, fun one there. Uh, definitely has some experimentation available as well. Arcane Steadfast, so we just never run out of energy and efficiency, so we can always cast Reeve. Now, this is my second favorite build, I'd say, on Kalervo. This is one I'll be showing some gameplay footage of. This is one actually not using his thirst ability. This is one using his fourth ability, uh, Storm of Ukko. And we're actually using Breach Surge from Wisp. So what this will do is it will mark the enemies, and basically, they're, I'll just put some gameplay on the screen of it. Uh, it will mark the enemies and make it where they, whenever they get damaged, they will release ghosts that damage other enemies. So um, right here in the footage, we, I've thrown down uh, Kalervo's 4 and basically just letting the letting the damage fall down. We're at about 2,200 damage right now per tick, and that those damage numbers are building my combo for my Glaive. So I've got a 12x Glaive right here. But yeah, casting Breach Surge will debuff the enemies to make them, like, release sparks after other enemies. And we're also going to run into a, one of the problems with Kalervo here, and why I think the Ensnare build is so useful. Kalervo, if, okay, basically, if Kalervo doesn't insta-kill an Acolyte, the Acolyte will insta-kill Kalervo. So it's, who's going to win? So when I show the Ensnare build, the Ensnare build was made literally right after this run, after an Acolyte one-shot me. Because, yeah, just no shield gate. He has no way of, of eye-framing besides, like, rolling guard and... Vazarin, so like outside sources, um, he has to have a way to fight these Acolytes because the Acolyte gives you the Steel Essence, I need that Steel Essence, and uh, yeah, if, if the Acolyte's going to come in here and slice me with a scythe and kill me in one hit, I'm not allowing that, so Ensnare's another option here. So for, for this, you can use your Glaive to nuke everything down or like any other melee, but really he can just, he can kill Steel Path with just weapons right here. This is about, this is over 100 kills per minute with just Kalervo's abilities uh, on the Steel Path. Uh, Circulus. Now here comes the acolyte to one shot me. But this is this is just I'm trying to show. Kalervo does have this kind of problem. So the acolyte is probably in the on the map for about I don't know like five seconds. I get CC stun locked, and I'm dead. That is that's called a Kalervo moment. So that's not the build being bad. That's Kalervo just not having the tools to survive that kind of an attack. So. The actual build itself is doing fine. Like, nuking down uh, Steel Path Eximus. Now, throwing in the Glaive does help, too. But, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next build here. And just accepting the fact that Kalervo is not survivable at all. Let's move on to the next build, which we already did no helmet. It's going to be Ballistic Bullseye from Mesa. So, this one is going to be whenever you cast the Shooting Gallery. Well, it's actually called Muzzle Flash, the augment. Um, it's going to be every six kills, I believe you release an AoE blind that scales with range. So, every six kills... A blind, I believe, goes through Overguard. Let me check just to make sure I'm aware of that. Um, we'll get, like, some 
XMS, XMS Gunner, I guess. Two of those. And then we'll get some, like, Butchers. I think this one goes through Overguard. If it doesn't, though, it's still, like, a blind that happens, like, every six kills. And you're getting so many kills as Kalervo that it, it should... Right. Oh, I didn't cast the two. I'm so good at this game. All right, cast the two. Okay, looks like the blind... They have like a little like blind thing on their face. I'm not sure if they're actually blinded right now though, so... Either way, pretty good, pretty good. Um, of course, you just link them together. Enemies, normal enemies will be stunned while you are using um, Ballistic Bullseye, like Lasso ability, so that's nice too. It also gets a weapon buff, so... This one's pretty... I haven't given it too much testing, but it's just a good helmet in general. Uh, just like the Nourish build, we're trying to have an AoE stun around us quite often. And this can get... This can uh, fit that bill. Weapon damage buff, not bad either. Scales of strength. Um, and also that... Looks like that blind did go through overguards. So that's also quite nice. So, depending on if you have enough capacity to fit it on, you can either go for Rage or Hunter Adrenaline. Um, I wanted to fit on this Muzzle Flash Augment. And I didn't really have a capa the capacity for a lot of this other stuff, so... This build also probably is not like 100% uh, min-max, but it's it's worked quite well. And for the final one, the Anti-Acolyte build, this is the one that was made right after I got attacked by the Acolyte. And just the general gist of this is link them all up, collective curse, and then one shot. The biggest thing here is just Ensnare works on Acolytes to make them not able to attack you, and that's the main thing I want. Alright, so let's go over a couple weapons here at the end of the video about weapon synergies with Kalervo. One of them is going to be... The Furus and Karnan. I'm going to show you what I like about the Furus and Karnan so much in Kalervo. And uh, maybe you can get it before it goes away, I think, on Sunday for at least another month. So, as far as weapon synergies on Kalervo, um, you want things that are like strong melees, and you also want things. You just want the strongest stuff in the game. Like, he can technically kill stuff with abilities in the Steel Path. But uh, as far as weapons, I've got the Latron Prime and Karnan right now. This is for armor stripping, hilariously. So, you want to have armor strip uh, some way for some enemies. I. You don't need it technically, but I usually want to have armor strip. So we've got armor strip from the Latron and Karnan. When we cause a puncture proc, it removes armor from the enemy permanently. Also, if you don't want to go Vazrin for invincibility, you can go Unairu. Unairu Magnetic Flare, I believe it is. No, Caustic Strike. Second ability launches an energy bomb that explodes uh, and will remove enemy armor. You can also remove enemy shields too. So this could be nice for softening up enemies, making them easy to kill with Kalervo's Curse. Um, but yeah, so since this guy has no, he has no shields... He's just armor and health. I've been really liking this weapon on him, the Furus. It's just the Furus normal. There's no Furus Prime. But um, the Furus in Karnan has this mod, or just the Furus in general, has this mod called Winds of Purity. It gives lifesteal to any weapon, or rather to any damage dealt by the Furus uh, in Karnan like, thing. So this will allow you to just like walk around and not worry about your health. Um, you can just like basically, it, and it does a lot of damage too. So the build here is a... A purely heat proc build, but we can throw on Nourish to have Viral and Heat. Um, and basically, cause damage to this thing, builds the Incarnon meter, push the Incarnon button, you get like a Jet Blaster of Death. I've been using this on the Nourish build a lot. And it just basically lets us heal back the full in one tick of damage. So let's quickly just uh, jump in here. I, I bet we're going to die in one hit to these Butchers, but let's just try it anyway. Okay, so when I get low health, I will fire off my Furious Incarnon. Back to full health. Now I build up the charge. By the way, you cannot you cannot build Incarnon charge from dead bodies anymore. When I have the Incarnon mode activated, it's big damage. Link them together. Link together like multiple hundred thousand. I've seen like multiple million with this thing. So this is a very nice weapon on Kalervo. Uh, if you're using the ensnare build, you can link them all to one area. If not, just link them together. Shoot one tick of damage from the Furious. And yeah, it's it's quite nice. Um, that's where the armor strip comes into play, too. Like, oh yeah, those are butchers. Of course you can kill butchers in one hit. If you throw in armor strip, you can kill, like, pretty much anything in one hit with this. Um, let's just go to, like, an Exogoxiad again, I guess. Uh, throw on some armor strip on these guys. And they're donezo. As far as melees, um, you want something that would probably be, like, a, uh, either purely heavy attack or hybrid heavy attack. Not bad for no stacks, huh? Yeah, this thing is really good. If I was to remake my Incarnate tier list, I'd put this at S tier. We're next to all the good stuff, so... Maybe consider getting the Furious Incarnate if you don't have it already. Uh, not only just for Kalerva, but for any frame that would want a lifesteal ability. And there's the armor right there. So, yeah, li linked together. Not bad. Not bad, honestly. Um, when they're linked, now things that will not get shared through the link. Like, for example, if I was to use that Latron Incarnate on a linked enemy, it would not armor strip the entire link. It would only armor strip the one enemy I'm shooting at, or hitting with bullets, for the, for, uh, for that matter. So, 
yeah, that's going to be the Calervo video, guys. Got these six different builds of Calervo. Um, let me know which one you think was the uh, your favorite in the comments down below. I, I know it looked pretty bad right there when I jumped into those heavy gunners and died as Nourish, but that's just kind of how he has to deal with things. So, um, if they, what I think they should do is to, to fix them is they should make it where like either Overguard scales with armor, Overguard scales with strength, Overguard scales with something, because the way it is right now, it is pretty much just a dud. Here, let me just jump into all these enemies. Like, you technically can kill them while you're face tanking, don't get me wrong. Um, but, like, look at that one. I'm, I'm spamming abilities right now. That's the, only, the only reason I'm alive is because they're not all focusing on me. They're getting viral stunned by Nourish. And, uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm literally spamming abilities as hard as possible. That's why you really want some casting speed on him. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate all the support, and take it easy. Peace!